Good morning. My name is Judy. And today we're going to be doing a root chakra class, Muladhara. I've studied the chakras before, but I've been doing some more studying recently. Doesn't by any length of the imagination make me an expert. But of course, it could pretty much take your entire life to become an expert on the chakras. So today we are going to be doing a root chakra, Muladhara practice. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. It's not a journaling class, but I am going to ask a lot of questions during the class. I might glance at my whiteboard from time to time. I have a lot of information I want to convey to you. But these are just things to soak in, to think about while you're holding your yin poses for a longer time. And I would love for you to bring a journal to this practice. So you can go ahead and pause right now and go grab a notebook or a journal. And I would love for you to do some journaling after the practice. I will try and run through the questions again and some of the prompts at the end. Okay, so for this practice, you are going to need a bolster or a pillow, a blanket or towel, and I'm going to suggest two blocks. If you don't have a bolster and you don't have a, a pillow, no worries, you can do this practice. Turn to the short end of your mat. I'm going to move my block. Go ahead, stretch your legs out straight in front of you. Sit up tall for a moment. Get a nice long spine. And I'm going to give you a few intentions for this practice. It's a grounding practice because the root chakra is, as you may have guessed, all about your roots, your foundation. It's located in your tailbone down your legs, all the way down to your feet. It's about being very grounded. And in fact, the element associated with root chakra is earth. And the color, in case you were wondering and hadn't guessed by now, is red. So another intention is to feel safe, to feel secure. Another intention is healing. And you can take one of these intentions for your, for your practice today, or you can just come up with your own. So now that we've sat here for a little bit, go ahead and close your eyes. Let your head be very heavy. Take your palm, your hands palm up by your thighs. Letting that head be really heavy, but not pushing it down, just letting time and gravity begin to draw your head closer and closer to your legs. This is Caterpillar. And my prompt for this position, this pose, is do you feel safe and secure? And that feeling of security, of having all your physical needs met, enough to eat, shelter, clean water to drink, all of those things are associated with your root chakra. Let your shoulders be really heavy without forcing them. Just feel them begin to calm down your back, just releasing any tension you might be feeling there. You can have your knees bent. I do this sometimes. If this is uncomfortable for you to sit, you can grab a block and sit on top of a block. That may make it feel a little easier. 
A lot of today's practice is going to be restorative in nature. So if you want to grab a bolster, if it's a heavy bolster, you can put it on top of your legs. That may feel very nice. So in addition to having our physical needs met, the root chakra is about your roots, not too surprisingly, your foundation. Feeling safe, feeling secure, feeling financially secure. Feeling like you belong in this world. Feeling a connection to everybody else in this world. And if chakras just don't do it for you, if it's not something in your belief system, that's totally okay. I promise you, you are going to get a wonderful lower body, tension releasing, fascia building practice today. A couple more breaths here. On your next inhale, go ahead and take your palms to the mat and very slowly begin to roll yourself up. Head is the last thing to come up. Go ahead and bend your legs. Come up into a tabletop position. You might like to grab your blocks. Hips are over knees, shoulders are over wrists, and on your next inhale, bring your left foot forward into what we call dragon pose in yin yoga, and you may recognize this as low lunge. And my question, my prompt for you in this position is do you feel financially secure? Do you feel like you have a handle on your money? I also want you to notice what your energy is. I meant to do this in the beginning of the practice, but we're pretty close. Just notice what your energy is like right now. Notice how your emotions feel right now. And do a, a quick little body scan. Start with your feet. Move up your legs, your hips, your abs, your torso, your chest, shoulders, hands, arms, neck, face. Where are you holding tension today? And perhaps you'd like to go a little deeper into this pose. Take your left hand to the inside of your foot. And wiggle your foot out to the edge of the mat. And maybe you come down to your forearms. And maybe you have your forearms on blocks. And maybe you stay up in the first position. Do what's right for your body. Think about elongating from that back right foot 
all the way through your spine, up through the top of your head, without contracting your muscles. Let them relax. Yin yoga doesn't target our muscles. We're trying to get into our fascia, our joints, our connective tissue. And as I said in the beginning, an intention can be for healing, a right to good health, that is part of your root chakra, that is part of your basic needs. Nobody ever feels good in the rest of their life when they don't feel good in their health. Couple more breaths. Begin to push into your hands. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Come on up. Bring that front foot back. Just give me a few hip circles here. Or whatever move feels right to your body. But I'm just going to loosen up those hips a little bit. That is a pose that is very good for pretty much everybody. Gets into our hip flexors, our psoas, all those things that get shortened by all that sitting. And yet it's one I don't like to do. <laughs> inhale, exhale, inhale. Step your right foot forward. Coming back to the prompt here. Are you mindful of your money? Do you watch your money? Do you feel like you never have enough money? So chakras can be efficient, or rather deficient and in excess, and they can be both at the same time. A deficient root chakra may mean you feel anxious because your needs aren't being met. You ignore your bodily needs. You don't keep yourself clean. You don't remember to eat. You don't care about how you're dressed, how you look. And you may feel really disconnected from the rest of the world. If you'd like to go deeper, remember you can walk that right foot out to the edge of your mat and come on down to your forearms. Trying to keep that back leg as straight as is possible for you. And once again, thinking about a straight line all the way from your foot through your leg all the way up through the crown of your head. But without trying to force yourself into that. Just notice how your body is. Notice if there's something you can do to make it feel more comfortable, to make it feel more aligned. One of the easiest ways to balance our chakras is to have basically good posture. Our chakras live along our spine. Deep inside though. A couple more breaths here. Slowly begin to bring your hands back toward your foot, pressing into them to bring you up. Bringing that front foot back and more hip circles because that is an intense stretch. Anybody who says that yin yoga is easy, 
I don't know, maybe they haven't practiced with me. <laughs> it seems easy on the face of it. But oh, so powerful. Okay, come to stillness. We are going to come into a squat, and I'm going to use a block on this height. To make it a little easier, you can use it on the highest height. You don't have to use a block at all. And you'll have to excuse me, I'll get cut off a little bit here because I'm not set up to have a full body. But I'm going to come up to standing. And you'll probably have to wiggle around to find the right spot for you. And feet can be pointing out. They can be pointing in. It's kind of up to you. And take your hands together and begin to squat down. Oh, I was using a different one this morning. I'm going to put it on the highest one. So as you can see, this is an area of limitation for me. I have tight ankles. I can squat down deeply, but my heels come off the floor. So the aim is to get your heels on the floor. If they don't get on the floor, my suggestion is to put a rolled up blanket or roll up your mat, um, something that your heels can come into contact to, relax into. Uh, I use one of my foam rollers sometimes, uh, one called the Original Worm. I put that under my feet and I can come down quite deeply. That's not the limitation. The limitation is my ankles and probably some other muscles in my legs. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> My prompt for you in squat is, are your basic needs met? A shelter, clean water, food, good health. So we talked about deficient root chakra. What are some signs that Muladhara is in excess? And remember, it can be in both. So some things from the deficient list, and, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, quite literally. Um, so some things from the deficient list may resonate with you, and some things from the excess list may resonate with you. Or you may find you feel imbalance in your root chakra. Any of those are quite possible. So excess, you feel greedy, you feel like you never have enough, you covet what other people have, you are coming from a feeling of scarcity, like there's not enough for everybody. You may be impatient. You may have a very short fuse. Or you may just feel stuck. Like you don't know what to do or you don't know how to break through where you are into where you want to be. Go ahead and bring your hands to your mat. Walk your feet towards your block if you're using one. Come on off it slowly. Set that aside. We will not need that for our next pose. I might need to push them out of the way. Go ahead and Come back up into a tabletop position. Come down onto your forearms. 
Take your right leg straight out behind you and then take your left leg out to the side. Your calf is parallel to the long end of your mat. This is half frog pose. And my prompt for you in this pose, do you feel like you belong? Most of the time I practice full frog. So that's both feet, both legs in this position. But I know that can be a bit much for some people. And I really, even though some of these poses are going to feel challenging, I wanted this to be a more restorative practice. So we're really going to be using that bolster in the last three poses. And invitation to just come down all the way onto your mat. If that's comfortable, reach your hands forward. Actually makes it a feel a little easier. I think I'm coming up back to my forearms. Reaching your hands out, coming all the way down to your mat takes a little pressure off your back so if you have back issues I suggest that is how you practice this pose this is a mild back bend and really pay attention to what your back is saying to you Last couple of breaths. Slowly begin to stretch that left leg out to the back. Bend both knees and then just let them fall side to side. Windshield wiper those hips. And now you can also, you can push back into child's pose. Give your back a little release. It's up to you. Whatever you need to do. Keep that back happy. And now I'm going to scooch over a little bit and we're going to bend that right leg. Left leg comes straight out towards the back. You can start out with your body on the mat, hands reaching forward. It makes it feel a little easier, a little easier on your back. You can be propped up on the forearms like I am. Do you feel like you belong in this world? Do you have a right to be here? And I invite you in this position to imagine some swirling red energy around your tailbone, through your perineum. And every time you inhale, you're pushing that wheel around. Chakra is often defined as wheels. And as you exhale, you push it around some more. So you're basically trying to wake up and energize your root chakra. 
This is a visual one of my teachers recently used, and I just love it. I use this a lot. I use this when I run. Sometimes it helps, and sometimes it just doesn't. But it's never going to hurt you. <sighs> Couple more breaths. Go ahead and take, slowly take that right leg, stretch it out behind you. Come on all the way down to the mat. Hands are by your shoulders. And just lift yourself up and back into child's pose. And just a brief little rest for that back. And as you're resting here in child's pose, notice how supported you feel. With your arms and your legs supported by your, the, your mat, the earth. You are safe. You are secure. You are connected. And go ahead and walk your hands back towards your knees. Go ahead and face the long end of your mat. Grab your bolster. Grab a block or two. Depends on how strong your blocks are. These are relatively new. I bought them not too long ago. These are strong, let me tell you. <laughs> they will hold things up. Such a difference between the blocks that I have been using for years and years and years. So let's see. Nope, we're going to put that on the tall site in front of us. We are going to stretch both legs out to the extent that we can. Bend in your knees is perfectly fine. You can sit up on one of these blocks behind your, your sacrum. That can make it feel a lot, lot easier, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if you have a pretty hefty bolster, I invite you to bring that block close to you and bring your head down. I'm going to turn my cheek to one side. And this is straddle pose. And my question for you here is, are you nourishing yourself? And I don't just mean with food. Are you nourishing your spirit? Are you nourishing your emotions? Just really allow yourself to relax into the support. Feel the support beneath your sit bones. Your legs are supported. Imagine those sit bones are roots. And they are growing down deep, deep, deep into this world. And they are reaching all the way down to the hot center of the earth. And you can just send whatever is not serving you in this chakra down into the molten core of this earth. And just let it Burn away.
And notice, bring your attention once again to your body. Notice how it's feeling. Notice if anything has changed since the start of this practice. Notice your energy. Do you feel a tingling anywhere in your body? And maybe you don't. Just notice. Go ahead. You've turned your cheek to one side. Go ahead and turn it to the other side. Notice if your shoulders are climbing up towards your ears. If they are, just breathe into that space. Let them fall away from your ears. slowly begin to bring your palms to your mat, to the ground, to the floor, turn your head through center, walk your hands back towards your body, and then slowly and gently blink your eyes open if you've closed them, and bring your head upright. Come back to face the short end of your mat. And once again, sometimes it takes a little playing around to find the right spot for our props. Take your block on the highest height. Take your bolster and put it on top of that block. And go ahead and lay down on that bolster. And the soles of your feet together. Hmm. Just let go. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> I hope it feels as good to you as it does to me. Let your arms, your palms be facing the ceiling. And this is reclined or more likely restorative <laughs> butterfly. And my prom for you here is are you setting boundaries? That is another thing that Muladhara, our root chakra, is all about. Are you setting physical boundaries? Maybe there's someone somewhere who invades your space. Who gets too close. It's a little chummier than they should be. Are you setting energy boundaries? Are there people in your life who just drain the energy right out of you? You just dread seeing them. How can you kindly deal with that situation? Well, that's a big one. It's not an easy one. And finally, are you setting emotional boundaries?
Think about that red swirling wheel of energy right above the area of illumination. As you inhale, you push it around. As you exhale, you continue to push it around. Bringing this chakra online. Unless, of course, you feel that this chakra for you is in excess, in which case, maybe you want to dial it back a little bit. Building this foundation here, it's just like building a house. If the foundation isn't laid right, it cracks. Perhaps it gets swept away in a storm. We can't do the work to heal the rest of the chakras until we have a really firm foundation. And that is what the root chakra is all about. Relax your face, relax your jaw, relax your throat, your shoulders, and yes, your legs. Last inhale. Slowly reach down, put your hands underneath your legs. Go ahead and bring them back together. Take your palms to your mat and very slowly push yourself up. You are moving into our very last pose. You will need that bolster if you have it. You do not need the block, although. For some people, it may help to sit on it once again. And I'm actually going to give you a choice on which pose you choose to do. So we're going to be facing our bolster and either pose. We can do basically a twist, in which case you're going to bring the bolster up against your hip and then drape your upper body against it and your head is going to face to one side and then halfway through you will I will kill you cue you <laughs> to go ahead and do the other side so that's one option or you can go ahead and do supported child pose so this is where for some people sitting on a block is actually quite helpful if not you bring that pollster up right up to you and then just drape yourself over it and again have your head going off to one side and go ahead and close your eyes this is your last pose in this practice it's a chance to calm down and de-stress before you get on with the rest of your day and my prompt for you in this position, which is very pertinent if you're doing child's pose, supported child's pose, as I am, how are your relationships with your family? Because yes, your roots are about family as well, and not just your immediate family, your ancestors.
And just really let go in this pose. Relax, let everything relax, release any tension you're holding anywhere in your body. Notice how when you inhale, your shoulder blades move away from each other. You feel expansion in your chest, in your collarbones. And as you exhale, it all comes back to the midline, to your spine. Notice how when you bring your attention to your breath like that, it begins to slow down and any thoughts you may have scurrying across your mind begin to slow down. As our breath goes, so goes our mind, and vice versa. Whichever pose you're in, go ahead and switch your legs if you're in a twist, or just your head if you're in supported childs. And thinking about your relationships, And as we're relaxing here, I want you to notice how you're feeling. Maybe do another short little body scan. This time let's start at the crown of your head and down through your neck, through your shoulders, your arms, your hands your chest, your torso, your abs, your hips, your legs and your feet. Notice if anything has opened up for you. Notice if you feel different, more spacious, lighter. Maybe you just feel calmer. Maybe you feel a little bit tingly, like energy is moving around in your body. And bring your attention from your physical body into your emotions. Did this practice bring up anything emotionally for you? It's neither good nor bad, it just is, just notice. And what about energetically? Is your energy different? I want to talk just a little bit about the subtle body again. There are lots and lots of people who do not believe there's such a thing. But have you ever walked into a room and seen someone, and they are just vibrant. Everyone is drawn to this person. They may not be good looking, but there's something about this person that just draws everyone to them. It's good energy. Or maybe you walk into a room and someone comes up to talk to you and you're like, yeah, no, I do not feel good vibes from this person. Maybe you've been in a situation where you're out walking or you're out running and you've 
cross paths with someone and you just get a bad feeling. These are all instances of our energy subtle body talking to us. It's called subtle because it's it's subtle. It, it's not, you know, people don't wear these things on their forehead. They don't have a sign saying, I'm an attacker or I'm a good person. I'm, you know, I have great energy. But they give out subtle signs. And when we're open to it, we pick up on these signs. I want you to stay here a few more minutes. I'm going to come up because I want to review some of what we have gone over. We went over a lot of information in this practice. And like I said, this is by no means the definitive guide to the root chakra. <laughs> Definitely not. But maybe it piques your interest. Maybe it helps explain some things to you. So. Our root chakra is our right to be here. It is our right to be here in the physical world. It is about meeting our needs. Clean water, healthy food, shelter. We feel connected to the earth, to everything that lives on the earth, to other people. When we're deficient in our root ch chakra, we may feel anxious. We may ignore our bodily needs. We may feel sluggish. We may feel very disconnected from everyone and everything. We withdraw into ourselves. We feel like we do not belong in this world. When we're in excess, we may feel greedy, like we can never get enough, like there's not enough to go around for everybody. You may be very impatient, have a very short fuse, and we may feel stuck, like we can't go back and we can't go forward. What else? The color associated with the root chakra, Muladhara, is red. Interesting, interestingly, the yantra, which is the symbol, is a yellow rectangle. So the colors associated with the chakras and their yantras, their symbols, they don't always go together, which I find fascinating. I'm not quite sure why yet. <laughs> um, what else do you need to know? Slowly begin wherever you are walk your hands back towards your knees, barely slowly pushing yourself upright. Come into a comfortable seated position for you, eyes closed. And let's just take a few breaths here. Bring your hands together, palms come to meet in front of your heart. Bowing your head slightly, spine is long, from your roots up to your crown, and I'm going to chant OM once. You can just listen, you can join me if you'd like to. Inhale to prepare. Om. Slowly begin to blink your eyes open, lift your head, maybe rub your hands together to come back into the present moment. Let your hands rest on your legs or in your lap. Thank you so much for joining me today. <clears throat> I hope you got a great stretch. This is actually, if you have more time, this is great to do before a run, but I know this is a longer practice. It's good to do 
post-run, but not immediately post-run. You're too warm and you can injure yourself by going too deeply into the poses. And this is also just great anytime you want to have a slightly challenging beginning and then a very restorative end. If you enjoyed this practice, go ahead and click the like button. If you want to know when new videos are released, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. If you're interested in going a little deeper and joining a community of people who are interested in yoga and beyond, especially women of a certain age who are trying to age better, then go ahead and request to join the Facebook group. The link is in the description below. Click the little arrow to open it up. There's a couple other links there as well you might enjoy. And most of all, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit about the root chakra. And remember, you can always go inside and find this calm, this peace. It's always waiting for you inside. Namaste.